हे गाइज वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल जावा इंटरव्यू बड़ी टूडे इज क्वेश्चन आर फ्रॉम प्रकाश रेड्डी ही इज वन ऑफ आर सब्सक्राइबर ही रिसेंटली फेज एन इंटरव्यू एट इन्फोसिस एंड ही हैज अराउंड थ्री पॉइंट फोर ईयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन जावा स्प्रिंग बूट एंड माइक्रो सर्विसेज एंड ऑनेस्टली इन्फोसिस इज हायरिंग सो अग्रेसिवली राइट नाउ आई एम गेटिंग एन ओवरवेलमिंग अमाउंट ऑफ इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम यू ऑल All right so let's start the video how does dependency injection work in spring boot internally so dependency injection simply means spring creates objects for you it scans all the classes find component and creates beans these beans are stored in a application context whenever your class need something spring inject it automatically internally spring uses reflection and proxies to manage this and this is one of the favorite question of interviewer in every interview about the spring boot 99% of the time they ask this question so you should prepare this question very well now coming to our next question which is what happens when you start a spring boot application internally so this is also a very important question and you can explain it like this when you run the main class spring application dot run method starts everything it triggers auto configuration it scans the packages it creates the beans and set up dependencies as well it triggers the auto configuration it scans the packages then it loads your config and finally it start the embedded tomcat server the next question is very well so before we jump to our next question i have a quick update for you our interview kit is live now and you can find it in the description of this video or any other video in the future so if you are preparing for the interviews don't ignore this kit this kit is prepared by myself and other industry experts as well and it is designed for the one purpose to crack any interview in java you see i have been in the industry for more than 11 years now and i have taken so many interviews like thousands of interviews in fact when i was in accenture i used to take 3 4 interviews per day so i know how interviewers thinks how they proceed how they ask the questions what type of questions they ask all the scenarios i know so that's why i created this kit just for you and this uh, kit created with the one mindset like to keep the real scenario to keep the real interviewer mindset to keep the real scenarios questions so if you follow this kit properly the chances are you can crack any interview all right so let's continue very common question which is what is the difference between component service and repository annotation now we have discussed this question earlier as well in many of my previous videos the answer is very simple and i'm sure many Any of you guys know the answer already. So if I need to answer this, I will say that all three are Spring Beans. Component annotation is generic one. Service annotation is for business logic, and repository annotation is for DB operation. And it converts the DB exceptions to general exceptions. And if you are using these annotation, it makes your code structure very clear. Now we move to our next question, which is what is the difference between hash map and concurrent hash map? So you can explain it like this: hash map is not thread safe, so multiple threads can modify it at the same time. This can cause data corruption, especially during resizing. Concurrent hash map is designed for multi-threading. It it uses internal locking and it does not lock the whole map. So whenever you are reading the data, it will not block the whole map. But while writing the data, it will block the map. So that is why it is better for multi-threading environment. Coming to the next question, how does Spring Boot auto configuration actually works? So auto configuration is a feature provided by Spring Boot. First of all, auto configuration checks what is already present in your project. For example, it checks the dependency, it checks the uh, available configuration, and based on that, it decides which beans to create automatically. It looks at the class part dependencies, properties, and default settings. For example, if Spring sees a web starter, it sets up Tomcat and Dispatcher servlet automatically. So there is an annotation called. So there is an annotation called at conditional annotation. So the whole thing is done by that annotation only inside the Spring Boot. Now the next question we have is how does transactional annotation work internally in Spring? So transactional is a annotation. which is used with the databases code so, transactional annotation creates a proxy around your method so whenever before the method runs spring opens a transaction in, and if everything goes fine it commits if the exception occurs it roll back the transaction the real power comes from the spring aop that's how the proxy is created now we have a next question which is from the market, microservices what is the difference between a monolith and microservice architecture so if i talk about monolithic architecture it's a architecture where entire project is a big code base 
Suppose we have a multiple modules like user module, authorization module, service module or payment module all sits inside the same deployment. But microservice on the other hand break this into smaller pieces like smaller and independent service. Each service has its own logic like database and deployment lifecycle. So basically it will give you flexibility like flexibility of using your own language like how you want to create your microservice, in which language you want to create your microservice, on which database your particular microservice you want to connect. So this kind of flexibility you will get. But it will also add some complexity as well, especially when communication and monitoring, like multiple microservices are communicating with each other. So that's why it is a complex process as well. Now we have our next question, which is how does a REST API internally work in Spring Boot? So if I talk about REST API, so whenever a request comes, it first goes through an embedded server, mainly Tomcat. Tomcat is by default, but you can change it later on. And suppose this Tomcat get your request and it forwards the request to the dispatcher servlet. Whenever we are using Spring Boot, we have a uh, servlet called dispatcher servlet inbuilt. So this dispatcher servlet finds which controller method should handle it. And based on the decision, it calls your controller. And from that controller, it will get the response back and convert that response into JSON using a JSON library or any other library. And finally, it sends the JSON back to the client. Now, our next question is again from Spring Boot. What is the difference between add controller and add rest controller? So both are very common annotations in Spring Boot. If I talk about controller annotation, it is used for the MVC applications where you return views like HTML templates. Of course, you can use it with REST ap application as well. But REST controller on the other hand, especially designed for REST APIs. It returns JSON directly because it combines controller and response body together. So in the most backend microservices, we use REST controller. And if you are using controller, then in case you have to also mention request body annotation as well. Coming to our next question, which is what is the difference between add request param, add path variable and add request body. So basically add request param is for query parameters. Like as you can see on the screen, so whatever parameter we pass on the URL, we can get it from the request param and add path variable is a part of URL, something like this, which I am showing you on the screen while request body is used when you send JSON data. So together these covers almost all input types in REST APIs. Now coming to the next question, which is how do you handle exception globally in Spring Boot? Now to handle exceptions uh, globally using Spring Boot, we generally use at controller advice annotation. And inside this, like we create a class and annotate with uh, controller advice. And inside this, we create a multiple methods. And each method is annotated with at exception handler. So each method handle a specific exception. Uh, this let you returns clean JSON response instead of raw errors. So you can create your co own custom exceptions and then handle th those custom exception using exception handler. So instead of writing try catch block, it's a, a most convenient way uh, while ex handling the exception using Spring Boot. And that is why most real projects use handling using Spring Boot. Now the next question is what is the difference between bean and component annotation? The component annotation is used on the class level. So whenever Spring do the component scanning, it will pick those class level beans. And bean is specifically used inside the configuration class. The most important difference is component is for normal classes while bean is for third party classes or when you need more control. Both end up inside the spring container, but the creation mechanism is different for both of them. Coming to our next question, which is what is the transaction propagation in spring? You can explain it like this. Transaction propagation defines how a method behaves if a transaction already exists. For example, to implement transaction propagation, we use keywords like required, new, mandatory or required. So for example, when we are using required, it will reuse the current transaction. Whereas required new will suspend the old one and start the new transaction. And if we are using mandatory keyword, it requires an existing transaction. Otherwise it fails. So most real projects use required and required new. So that's all for today's video. These were some really good questions shared by Prakash after his Infosys interview. And most questions are, I mean, all, all questions are from Spring Boot. I hope they help you understand uh, what to expect with three to four years of experience. Infosys is hiring a lot right now. So if you are preparing, make sure you are strong in Java, Spring Boot, Microservices Basics. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe and share it with your friends as well. And if you want to join 
मॉक इंटरव्यू और शेयर योर ओन एक्सपीरियंस यू कैन चेक द डिस्क्रिप्शन सो सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो